Hi, this is uh, Jay Harwood with the special edition of Amazing Men's Love, my podcast. I guess it's what you call cross-pollination, right? I think that's kind of the word, yeah. Mark Lueno, Mets Up, James Chiano. Listen, my podcast, Amazing Men's Love, my podcast, is a tongue twister. Mets Up, what are we talking about here? A little bit easier, a little bit easier, a little bit but quicker. But if you go in quickly, it's something else, right? Yeah, it's also it's a little difficult because, like me, some other New Yorkers, we have trouble with T's. Yes. We talk so quickly, yeah. so it just sounds like messed up. You yeah. know what I mean? It's messed up. It's not messed up, though, right? No. Okay, good. I'm glad. Because I, I don't want to get us fired. The official <laughs> podcast of the Mets. Yeah. A year ago, two years ago, you were in the stands watching the game. This year, you're interviewing players. How did that come about? Well, I mean, sadly, two years ago, no one was in the stands watching games. <laughs> well, <you know. laughs> I'm joking. Well, that's, well that was cool. It's true. Very good. Yeah. Very good joke. No, I was, Very I was good. making a joke. But, I mean, we just... We just, Mark and I lived together for a year in Astoria. Right. After he graduated college, I moved back from living in Columbus, Ohio for a few years. And we're just both psycho baseball fans, right. both woefully obsessed with the Mets. We had this idea to just start the show just because why not? Mark has his YouTube channel. I've been blogging and tweeting and writing. Stuff giraffe like neck Mark? Yes, That's giraffe neck Mark. The neck, I know. Everyone says it. Yeah. Not as long as they expect. It's not, it's not a giraffe neck. No. Giraffe. I, th- I think as I've put on weight, it's oh, made, good. Like, a little it's bit a, more normal. nice looking neck, Mark. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what? <laughs> but yeah, then we just went from there. We just started doing it every twice a week after every single series. Mark edited the videos, I edited the audio. We both right. ran the social media accounts and just kept going, kept going, kept going and until it kind of popped. I heard the story that the two things that brought you to our attention was after the lockout ended, you got a lot of attention, and about the Max Scherzer trade, you got a lot of attention. You what guys want to take? Take me through that. Yeah, so Twitter had a new feature, Twitter Spaces, and I had seen people using it, and I was like, yeah, let's just try it for the Max Scherzer, because right. that was the one that ended up happening first, and it just popped off. I think we had, what, four or 5,000 people, I think, yeah, listening to us? More at certain times. As we were talking deep into the night, it was like, what, 2 a.m., I think, when yeah. we wrapped up? And There's some players in there. Jack Flaherty was in there. Um, I think D.L. Hall. Were they interview, you interviewed them? Or? No, they were just listening in right. on our live stream, just yeah. listening to us talk about baseball. Kind of Really, it was just talking about the Mets, really, because we were just talking about Max Scherzer, and then Twitter, the Spaces, has a feature where listeners can chime in. Like, people can raise their hand, and you can pick on them to ask a question. So people were just asking us, other things about the off season, their right. team's outlook, their mm-hmm. farm systems, prospects, and we just kind of went. It was from like seven p.m. until almost three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, we both did, of them. Yeah, we did like seven straight hours of just baseball content nonstop. So you didn't know what was going to happen when you did it, right? Oh, no, no clue. We no thought chance. we'd get like 30, 40 people in there, and it just went. Yeah. Why, we, do you, why do you think it hit so well? I mean, why do you think it? Uh... I think a combination of two things. One, it was such a big moment, especially the Max Scherzer. For a big fan base of the New York Mets, everybody was kind of, we called it a watch party because that's what it kind of felt like. Everybody was waiting. We were updating with all the tweets from all the different reporters that were happening. Like, minute by minute, if you knew something, we were talking about it. So it just probably was a combination of an exciting event along with you could get all the information at once at one place. But see, you have Buster Olney, John Heyman, a lot of, and it wasn't like you were the only one that's dispersing the information, right? You think because you had it all together, that was it? We, we said jokes for a while that we had, like, the most popular Twitter space, not even about baseball, ever, for a right. certain amount of months, basically until there was, like, a big college football story, yeah. I think, and the Barstool guys raided the Twitter space back in the spring. But I think we're just accessible, you know? Like, we were taking questions from anybody who wanted to ask. Like, Joe Fan would they able to go? Absolutely. Exactly. Like, everyone just – and you, we, we could talk to you about anything. Like, we're talking about the Mets and Max Scherzer. If you want to talk to us about the Detroit Tigers or the Seattle Mariners right. or the Washington Nationals, like, we'll have an answer for you. And we're just here for everyone to hang out and – Luckily, a lot of other creators who we were both connected with jumped in. Our space went to their following when they logged in. I know what you're talking about. You know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, of course. I have no freaking idea what you're talking about. <laughs> they might, Jay. No, I don't know. I do. I have no idea what you're talking about. So, I mean, did, did any players call in or we did, like you said, any John? Any players call in? We didn't have, I don't think, any players specifically chime in uh, on what was going on. But we had some former guys we did try and chime in guys, yeah. um, that, you know, felt like they could give a spin on what was going on. We had a lot of bigger baseball personalities, I would say, more so than players chiming in. Yeah. But, I mean, throughout the night, if you, like, looked at the viewer list, which you could see, right. it would sort it by who had the most followers. Right. And if you had a check mark, and you would see just different Major League Baseball players hanging out, comedians, musicians. Like, it was... And you get with Jack Benny on there? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Gleason, no? No, none of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dead. Yeah, Jack Gleason's very dead. Jackie Gleason. Well, like, like, Why did you Jack get Gleason. the call, you know, to, hey... Next step from what you're doing to be the official, twi- uh, you know, uh, 
podcast with the Nets. Well, we um right when the season was getting started, right after the lockout ended, we were just we had grown a decent amount in the offseason, right. despite the lack of baseball news. And we started talking with Darren from the Seven Line, yep. who was a friend of Mark for a while. He's become right. a friend of mine. We love going to games at Seven Line, going to events, going to pre-games down by the marina. Yeah, lots and of fun. And he was like, hey, like I don't have much to offer you guys, but I know I can get you some more eyes. I could probably get you sponsors down the line. I think right. we could have a mutually beneficial partnership here. We do something together. And we're like, yeah, that's a great idea. And our season preview episode, like the first week of April, we announced this partnership with the Seven Line, this graphic, all this stuff. This is April stuff. this year, right? Yes, yes. this yeah. is a month after the lockout right. ended, April this year. And then... The day we released that episode, I think the day right as the Major League Baseball season started, that yes. afternoon, we got a direct message from uh, someone named Steve Peralt, who was at Odyssey. He, he was a uh, good friend of ours, but um, he basically told us that they were trying to sign deals with podcasts with team partnerships, right. and if we'd be interested in doing that for the Mets. And I remember I texted you. I was like, <laughs> you want to do this, right? You're interested in working with no, the I Mets? Think, I think you sent me something like, oh, my God, you think this is real? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, yeah, may, maybe it is. And then from there, we had a couple calls with uh, Steve, some other Odyssey people, some Mets yeah. people, and the ball just started getting rolling. It happened. So, so when did it officially start? When was it Mets connection? We worked on it for, I feel like, three two, or f- two, three, two, three, three two, months, months or so, yeah. and I feel like it was, what, the middle of June, right? Middle of June is when it actually began. Was it the Marlins series that on Monday, I think, right? Was yeah, yeah that was the first one we officially did here with them. Yeah. Because yeah, that was that weird... We were strange Monday, yeah, Monday day game. I forgot. We met those two nice guys in yes. the stands down the field level. We were chopping it up with them for like an hour. But yeah, that was it, middle of June. So you work for the club now, right? Yes. Are you guys homers or what? I mean, I mean you kind of have to be. I've, right? I've, I've been called to... uh, very biased oh, by a lot of not people. That, not that we weren't before, but now it's like it's extra incentive. <laughs> yeah. So I saw you did an interview with Scherzer, right? Very good guy. I don't really know him because I work with the Great old guy. I'm an older yeah, guy. I work with the older players. So, so he pitches. You do an interview with him. Are you worried? I mean, <laughs> what did you say after the playoffs? Uh, uh, we didn't do anything. I mean, about we just said, like, I mean, as honest as we could, like, he just didn't pitch his best game. Like, right. he knows that. I'm not, yeah. not going to say anything about Max Scherzer as, as a person or as right. a player, the whole body of work. But, I mean, anyone, any person who's watched baseball at all for the last decade plus knows right. that that Friday night, Max Scherzer did not pitch his best game. Yeah. I think and it's easy to say that and not really causes any kind of strife with anybody while also maybe people respecting your opinion. Yes, we try to make sure that, like, whatever we say doesn't feel personal. We want to make sure that it's no, very I much... I that it ever should be. Yeah, no. Let me give you a great crazy. example. Bob Murphy, probably being way too young to remember, Bob Murphy was a radio guy, the original guy was Lee Nelson, Ralph Kiner. He, he never made his interviews personal. He would criticize, but in a nice way, would plays you know you've been criticizing. And players never turned down into the Bob Murphy or Ralph Kiner or even Howie Rose, you know, those guys. You, you guys did Howie Rose, right? Yeah, we yeah. did. It was awesome. Great, great guy. I mean, Incredible. I'm supposed to be the Met historian. Howie knows 100 times more than <laughs> I do. Howie knows 100 times more than most people have ever walked on this earth. About, like, <laughs> between Mets, Rangers, Islanders, he's a, he's a freak of nature. It's an encyclopedia. You guys were fans. How did, when you sat down with Scherzer, you know, I'm, I was a Willie Mays fan growing up. I can imagine if I even interviewed him. How did it feel when you sat down with him? He, he like made a, you feel comfortable. Oh, you know, so, oh my so God. comfortable. And he said, let's have fun with it. So that was For sure. Yeah, he, uh, we had been talking about, like, you know, through working with the Mets, we had been like, okay, Scherzer could be coming today. We could be talking to Scherzer. That's probably so, been like three or four times where we'd go down there and be like, you might get Scherzer, and then be like, all right, we didn't get Scherzer. And like, yeah. on this day, he was like, I first have to go do something. So he thought he kind of, like, blew us off, like, ah, I'm busy today. Right. Like, I, I can't do it. And then all of a sudden, we see him walking down. He's like, all right. Do it, and we're looking for our camera guy scrambling. So yeah. that kind of, I think, took away a lot of the nervousness. I like yeah. the way he did it because when he quotes superstars, they don't make you feel like you're doing them a favor, like they're doing you a favor. You know, he did it very relaxed and let's have fun with it. He spent a lot of time with you, right? For sure. And for like, since we knew something like this was probably going to happen for like a month, and it, not that it had been teased, but like we've been told it was likely that right. it happened at some point this season. Like I went back and tried to look at old interviews he did in articles, yeah. podcasts, like television, and like you could just see how congenial and respectful. Of a guy he is. Who else did you do? I mean, you did Naquin, right? I mean, Naquin, Bassett, Nino. Nino. Um, we did Trevor May in the offseason. Trevor right. May, yeah, that was before even with the that Mets. That was a Mets. good interview. Canna. Yeah, yeah I did Canna. Thomas Nees is one of the few guys I know on the team. I used to be the regular PR guy for 38 years, mm-hmm. and I've been gone for like four years. I know DeGrom, Nimmo, Nino. I know uh, Jeremy Hefner and Glenn Sherlock. It's really remarkable to turn out. And, uh, when you're on the field, you try and go out on your own, or you wait for people. We just like as far we it was so new to us at the beginning, and we so I think were not wanting to like step out of our zone yeah. as guys with like 
temporary badges who were like wearing backpacks and like t-shirts <laughs> and jerseys to we, compared to the other journalists out there we just wanted to like make sure that the players knew they could feel comfortable with us like oh, yeah. we weren't gonna ask a question that like some of the you know the more like distinguished established older journalists were gonna right. say like we want to have fun we want to let give you the space to say something that you might not be able to say in another interview because yeah. to us that's compelling and to our listeners that's yeah. great content and i feel like from our experience too like we never want to be like gotcha no, like God, that's, God forbid. that's never anything we want to do. So we want those guys to want to come back on our show if we want to speak to them again. If yeah, you ask you, did, like, would sure they ever say, how can I listen to this? Or did anybody ever ask? Or? Um, I, I don't think so. I think Mc, <laughs> McNeil's really, the, and Trevor May would be yeah. the only ones, but McNeil, when we saw him on the field, because I had a relationship with him during COVID where I would help him out with his Twitch streams. Uh, when wow, he saw us, he was like, me, what's a Twitch stream? Gaming, video games, <laughs> video games. Me. He's playing video games so people can watch him while he's yeah. live. Playing video games live. Yeah. Right. So when he saw us, he like congratulated us. He was like, "Congrats on the podcast. That's yeah. great." Yeah. So that's yeah, that, that was a genuine moment. The fact that like a baseball player walked up to us and was like, "Great job, guys." You, you did your stuff after every series. Every, every series. Yep. What are your plans for next? Are you going to change it around or do the same thing? Not too legitimate. We, we like the every series thing just because I feel like a series is a good, it's a right. good basket of games. Right. And like in, in terms of like watching as a fan, as a player, as a coach, as a front office executive, like you kind of take in a lot of the season in your right. series. You want to win your series. Mess did a really good job of that during the regular season this year. So we're kind of like taking that snapshot of the two, three, or four games, sometimes five in a rare instance like this year, and we get we flush it and move on to the next one. And I think it's also we really like to dive deep into these games because we're not doing it every day, but we do have it every series. So we want to make sure that we cover all the things that are important where sometimes when you do a week-long podcast, if you're talking about a week's worth of games, you right. can miss a lot of the, I don't want to yeah. say minutia, but little things that oh, happen. Oh, yeah, because there's sometimes there's a decision that happens in the seventh inning of a game that maybe didn't impact that game right. itself, but like you could kind of see like the foreshadowing of how that decision would impact the decision down the line. That right. might be more important the way a player was used, that, that kind of stuff. Somebody told me you don't think David Wright was a good player. Is that true? I don't think anyone said that. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I got bad information? I That's his so. favorite player. Yeah, oh, I was just yeah, kidding. Yeah, I love David. Let was... me say this. It's, I've worked with David for this whole career, and as good a player as he was, he was a hundred times better person. Yeah, everyone says that. He founded his own foundation when he was 20. His father was a policeman and did a lot of charity work. And Except for the injuries, to me, he would be... He's just 39. I think he's 40 yeah. in November, oh, December. God. And, you know, right on the plane for Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was he was so incredibly talented. And, like, even the, the sample that we got to watch him play, like, that's still incredible as a Mets fan. He was also like, so important to the franchise as a person. Like, he was just that exact perfect superstar that everyone he, he about. He got it. You know the expression? He got it. He, yeah. he was great with the media. Yep. He was more amenable to stand up for his lock when he had a bad game. Like, he would take the brunt. Like, when locker room works, the pitcher usually is the first guy there. But he always took the bullet. He said, let me, let me answer this. Like, we got no, we got one hit, and he would stand in front of his locker. But he didn't like to talk about himself. And in his last couple of years when he played, he had to take two, two, two and a half hours to get ready for a game. And he worked so hard to get ready for that last game because he wanted to get on the field for his young kids, you know. And he, he worked so hard to get there, but he's, Still a close friend, but really, he's uh, hopefully you get a chance to. You've never really interviewed him, though. No, no, never even, not even really, not even ever interviewed him high, at all. High on the list. Yeah, I had, yeah, probably my number one. I had a moment where um, I was visiting friends out in Los Angeles this past spring, and right. they live in Santa Monica. I think David now lives somewhere around there. Right, he does. And um, we were just at some sports bar to watch March Madness, and it was like a New York ish sports bar. They had Mets stuff, Yankee stuff, Jets right. stuff, Giants stuff all over. And I'm wearing a Mets shirt. My friend was wearing a Mets hat. It's just a random day, March, getting excited for the season. Some random guy walks up to us. He goes, oh, are you guys Mets fans? We were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? He was like, you wouldn't believe it. David Wright left here 20 minutes ago. Right. I was like, no yeah, way. Yeah. I was like, I couldn't even focus on the basketball. I was beside myself. I missed, like, one of my heroes by less than a half hour. Yeah, he's a guy. I mean, hopefully you get a chance to meet him. So you want to make anything different for next year or? I mean, probably just organization. Coming into the, in the yeah. mid middle of the season, it right. was like we had to hit the ground running. Yeah. Like our first day that we signed the papers, we were doing an episode. Right. So we had, we want to be able to like use this off season, plan more things out, get as much bonus content as we possibly can for our listeners, more player stuff, hopefully spring training, and then just kind of be more comfortable in our spring second training year. is really the best time to go. It's more relaxed. Yeah. You okay. know, it's, you can do other things on like the minor league complex, and you know, and the, the players have more time. And it's mm -hmm. more close with the fans and everything. Yeah. You, you keep trying to get a chance to go down here. You know, I have a personal seat at Chili's down here. <laughs> no, I do. 
I have my own table of chilies. <laughs> What's your go-to? Um, Southwestern egg rolls. Oh, nice. okay. Southwestern okay. ribs, yeah. a little clam chatter, and a diet coke. I like to mix wow. in the diet coke. That's all one. All one. Yeah. <laughs> I rotate a little bit. I'm, I'm a sizzling fajitas man myself. Um, um, but if you have to go to chili. You see my, you know, Mike Cameron and Cliff Floyd had a table. I have a table right next. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. But. I, you guys are big Jets fans of her, too? I'm a big he Jets is. fan. Marcus Com- Commanders Commanders, fan. yeah. I'm a big Giants fan. I've seen nice. since 1958. Wow. And you like college football, too, I heard? Love college yes, football. definitely. Yeah. Ohio State Buckeye. Yeah, I'm, I'm Notre Dame. I got to be oh. touchdown Jesus last year. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what first, you, first you comment on his neck, then you used to use the phrase touchdown Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty unbelievable. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I'm a South Carolina fan, but if you're a Notre Dame fan... Uh, how'd, you, how'd you come to be a South Carolina fan? I went to school there. I went to school there for... Uh, Five years. I took a victory lap. <laughs> Can't say four no, years. It wasn't true. Right. But a couple courses. Yeah, just. Mark also <laughs> built a business in the meantime. Yeah, I was, I was the busy. YouTube channel. He, I was did, busy. he did. Okay I had, I had other priorities. So how, how do you get two hundred forty thousand people on your YouTube channel? Yeah, question. no, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> you gotta make videos people want to watch. Yeah. I mean, I know that sounds simple, but there was a while where, like, I mean, I had been doing it for two or three years, and I was sitting around like thirty thousand, and I was like, "What is happening? Why can't I get that push?" I started talking about you know, actual baseball uh, a little more seriously and in a way that's more entertaining to people. And all of a sudden, the numbers started taking off. So I'm super lucky that people still want to hear what I have to say about teams, even though I am the biased Mets fan. You think you get to go to spring training, hopefully? You're trying to- uh, I mean, I'd love to. Yeah, I hope so, right? Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, uh, we, put, we, put, we put in the word. We, I mean, I think a lot of people are vouching for us. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to go for sure. It's so, fun. So when did you start? You started doing this two years ago? March of 21. 20, yeah, so 20, March 29. Could you... Where have you come to uh, November of 2022? Is it unbelievable where you guys come from? It's, it's, it's shocking. I wake up every single day and can't even comprehend what's going on yeah. in like, my life. We get to say that we work for the Mets. We get to talk to the Mets players. Like be, Having the tag of like the official podcast of the New York Mets yeah. for a Mets you fan. Know, I'm insulted, by the way. <laughs> I've been here for 42 years. I'm not the official anything. No, I mean, you, no, you're no, the official no, everything. No, yeah. no, no. You're like the mayor of City no. Field. <laughs> we're, still, we're still trying to get verified on Twitter. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. It's, it's unbelievable what we've come from to where we are now, and we can't wait to keep going because yeah. like in our first year, we felt like so much has happened and we've been able to accomplish so much, but – we have like such higher goals for what we can actually do, and I mean, having the Mets backing us and helping us is something I don't think I ever thought I was going to say. Well, yeah, it's almost like we couldn't even realize it until the season actually ended, and then you kind of woke up like two days later, like, what, what did we just do for the last three months? It's well, like, oh, what actually happened? A rush. It's a, it's a great human interest story, guys. From the, I'm sure, a lot of fans like to be in your shoes, you know. Probably if an infinite amount. <laughs> Well, it was really good to do a little cross pollination with the two of videos. Course, for sure. to, uh, we have to get you on ours now. I, my, my pleasure. I have a feed, you know what I mean? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, well, I think the, the Mets will cover yeah. that. Yeah, no, they won't. But That's anyway, actual cross pollination. Right. Best of luck with you guys, okay? <laughs> thank you, Jay. Thank, thank you, you Jay. Take, take care, man.